we go. Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One, coming to you on Tuesday, October the 29th. The year is 2024. Let's talk trading. Horizontal lines with Walmart. These videos are for educational purposes only. Your results may differ from mine and from Walmart's. And when you're trading, always have your risk management in place. Never lose more than you're willing to lose on any one single trade. So Walmart, we're going to tell the traders or show the traders about horizontal lines and looking left and all that good stuff, right? It sounds like a plan, man. <laughs> okay, so where are we going to put some horizontal lines? We're going to start on what chart? Daily, H4? Yeah, I would, well, I, well, here, here's what I do. I, because I only use one chart. And then I flip through the, uh, the periods. Right. Um, I'll just, I'll just go in on the, let's go in, I would start at a monthly. Okay. That's what I do. I, I start at the monthly. Right. And what I do is I draw a line out there that's at the open okay um i know some people like to do it at the close some people like to do it you know the high the low and maybe all of those markers but i just like the open that's the only thing i care about okay and uh be interesting to know what you think okay well let's just go through yours and we can maybe do mine okay. if we have enough time today okay. if not the next day <laughs> sounds good so we got so, your monthly open I'll got the monthly open mm -hmm. and then I'll go I'll drop down to the weekly and do the same thing with just the opens okay and then I'll go down to the go down to the daily and I draw the uh, the opens for every day of this week so if it's about Tuesday I got Monday and I got Tuesday if it happens to be Thursday I got Monday Tuesday Wednesday mm -hmm. and Thursday right if it's Monday I've got Monday, that's it. <laughs> right, okay, so basically you've got the same line because they're only like 0 0.2 apart. Exactly. Yeah, so, okay, so, so any more horizontal lines? Um, and then I do the H4. Again, with the open. Just the one H4 open? Yep, that's it. And since we're starting okay. a new H4, here we go. Exactly. And what I do is I always have certain colors for certain hours just so I can identify it without having to put my cursor over the top of the line right. and to see the label. But I just, you know, you just wind up memorizing the, those colors and you just know it. Now, the only other thing I do is now I used to do this. I don't do it anymore. Um, well, if you don't do it anymore, let's not confuse them. <laughs> no, but I think it's important to go and talk about it because it, it's part of, uh, I don't go and draw, what I was going to say is I don't go and draw a rectangle around those lines anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but what I used to do is um, I draw between, uh, you know, on a on the H4, I draw like about three, four, um, a, a rectangle that went three or four pips above it and three or four pips pips below it and I would do that uh, as well for the daily and then when I went up to the uh, the weekly the monthly I'd expand that out to about five pips on each side mm -hmm. and I draw rectangles around it and the reason why is because I like to look at things in terms of zones I don't draw those rectangles anymore and the reason why I don't do it is because I've gotten to a point now, I see the rectangles without having to draw the rectangles. So I would recommend that traders, especially if you start to draw lines on your chart, maybe if you want to go and do the same concept that I do of drawing, of wanting to know a range or, or, a, or an area of contention, I would draw, the, I draw those rectangles out by hand for right now. Um, and the reason why is just because you know, at first you don't see it, you know, unless you're, you know, unless you're a billion times smarter than, than I am. And that's, that's not a difficult hurdle to get over, but um, it's just much easier in the beginning just to draw it. And then what happens is over time, your eyes just naturally see it. Oh, I see a brown line. Oh, that's an H4. Okay. There's a rectangle that goes around it with 
three bips above it and three bips below it. And you just, your brain just does it automatically. But in the beginning, until you train your brain to do it, you know, it doesn't do it. And it's sort of like, you know, your idea, of, you know, with a lot of your indicators with the training wheels. The reason why you have the training wheels is not so that you rely on the training wheels. It's so that you get your brain to start thinking in a particular way so that eventually you don't even need to have those training wheels on there anymore. They, they can come off the chart, make the chart less cluttered, but your brain still thinks that way. At least that's how I look at your, your training wheel indicators. Right. So then, um, so we just have the uh, monthly, weekly, daily, and H4. Yeah. And I don't put the yearly open on there. I know it's an important number. But the, the reality is we're usually so far away from it, it's inconsequential. Now, I may go and draw the, the weekly, op uh, the weekly, the yearly open on the chart if, um, if we happen to be getting within, you know, 15, 20, 30 bits of it, you know, then, uh, then I may all of a sudden go and put that on there. Now, here's a, here's a little cheat, okay? Um, the reality is you can go and use your indicators and use the idea of the, the you know, the, the near um, uh, parameter on your indicators so that you don't put it on the chart unless you, the price happens to be near it. That way it keeps your chart a little bit cleaner. Right. Um, as you go between different time frames, um, and the other the other little hint that I'll give here is that in the beginning, I would highly recommend going out there, and even though you've got an indicator to go and do this, like TRR opens, will draw all those different lines for you, and you can just go and put multiple instances of that out there, and it will do it for you. Or you can use HL5, and HL5 will do the same thing. Okay. I highly recommend going out there and drawing the lines yourself. And I think there's just some, there's just something about it, make, uh, attaching you to understanding the chart and what's going on in the chart um, when you're physically drawing the lines yourself. It, it, it's something with your brain, I think, that just makes you click in. And then, of course, what you can then do is once you, you've drawn your lines, go and check yourself. Go and throw the GRO opens out there or the GRO HL5 and turn the indicator on and see how close you came with, or did you mess up or that way you can go and get it. You know, it's, it's just a nice little self-checking. The nice thing about doing, drawing these lines is that with the exception of the H4, you can draw all these lines the night before for the most part. You know, you... You know, you just go and, and, and that's what that's what I do anyway. Right before I go to bed, last thing I do um, is I'll go out there and open up the charts, draw all those lines up there. If I have to change any, you know, usually you only have to go and change them once a day, you know, because of the daily line. And, you know, it, it, that way when you open up your chart first thing in the morning, guess what? You know, the only thing that you may have to draw in additionally is depending on when you're starting to trade is the H4. And um, but you get you get a you get a sense of you, you know the whole idea of drawing it yourself you get a sense of connectivity to the actual chart itself as opposed to oh there's a magical line on the chart and the problem with magical lines is you know you don't understand sometimes what that's done because when you draw the line for the daily you're not just drawing the line to the daily because it happened to be an open end you can see the candle before it and the candle after it and say oh look at this. There's been two or three days in a row that I've seen that we've had this problem. Oh, that line may be more. Oh, I may want to go and somehow designate that. Maybe I make that line a little bit bolder, a little bit thicker, or something else that makes it stand out more because there, there may be a little bit more significance there. And it, uh, so that, that, again, another advantage or, or of going and drawing the line yourself. When you use the indicator, all it's going to do is draw a line out there. Right. You, don't necessarily see everything else that goes with it. So now we've got these lines. Do we switch down to the M1 chart? What I do is when I go down to the M1 chart, I then look at the M1 chart. And what I do is, now I do the lines a little bit differently than you do. I look at those lines as danger areas. In other words, areas where there's going to be contention between traders. In other words, there's going to be bulls out there, and there's going to be bears out there, and there's going to be a fight. And um, call me a chicken, but I look at trading from the perspective I want to go and I want to go get into my trade 
when there's not a fight. I want the fight to be won, or at least a uh, high, a highly, uh, a high, a high probability that the trade is won. In other words, okay, we're going to go and cross over the H4. I don't want to be getting in at the H4 open. What I want to do is I want to go and get in when it's crossed to the other side of the H4 and it's got some momentum and it's pulling away from that H4. So I want to go and take advantage of that or the daily. You know, in fact, we just saw that we were talking about this uh, before we got this video. That you know, down there, the weekly open and the daily open are basically at the same same exact spot. And I said to you, okay, if this thing crosses above it, you know, it's going to run up to the 85. And if I and when I said it, it was still actually going down. And you know, the the, the reality is, it you know, I could have gone in short. It looks like a short trade. Look at that. We're crossing over the over the weekly and the daily open. That's a breakout trade. Look at that. Let's go short. Oh crap! I just got run over by a bus, you know, because it turned around with the other direction. And that's why I want, I want some type of momentum going in the other direct, going in whatever direction it's going to go in. I could have just as easily taken a short trade there if the momentum would have continued, you know, to the downside. It didn't, you know. Mm -hmm. and that's why I hold off. I said, "Dad, I'm going to sit on my sit on my hands." I'm going to watch the H1, uh, the H1, the, the M1. I'm going to watch the M5. I want to see what's developing here. If I then go and say, hey, look at that. I got a flip flop. Oh, look at that. Not only you got a flip flop, I got a two bar. Oh, look at that. It's creating out of that range, that three, four pip range that I like to go and put, put around things. Ooh, that looks like a good, good place to get in. And so what I would have done is left that flip flop. I would have gone out of that range, you know. Um, what would have what would have happened at the point in time is I would have gotten in probably uh, I happened to be on a on meal break when that all happened but I would have gotten in at seventy two and I could have ridden that that sucker all the way up you know potentially for you know ten thirteen fourteen pips something ridiculous like that before a front and flopped off of it you know but again the only other place I'll draw a line is you'll see that at eighty five. And I'll draw a line across at 85. Why? Because if you look at look to the left, okay, you see a big you see a range that happened in the, the uh, beginning portion of the of the previous hour, and it ranged from about um, 86 down to about oh let's say I would say 80, 82, 83, something along well those lines. You know, it was a nice little range that it sat in over there. That tells me hmm, there's a lot of people fighting again. I'm a chicken. I don't want to be in the middle of that fight. Let them go fight it out. I'm just going to take my money off the table. So what do I do? I get in at that 72 or so. And what do I do? I get out, you know, at 83. I would have put my TP somewhere around 83. And, you know, that's that's 11 pips. That's not a bad day, you know. And then you had opportunities where you could go and, you know, add into your trade as it was going up. And so potentially you could have, turn that into a 20 a 20 pip move because you know you have multiple places where you could have gone in and added to your trade so that's just how i'd like to trade or trade lines uh one thing i would assume that the traders would probably go you don't use highs and lows <laughs> I really don't, you know. The only thing I use highs and lows for is uh, uh, I look at it from the perspective of if I get a candle and it shoots up, you know, and let's say, well, let's go and where, where we are right now. Let's say it shot all the way down, okay, and I know we're almost out of time here, so I'll try to say it quickly. But let's say it shot all the way down, let's say it's 65 on the on the previous candle, or let's say even this candle, and then it shoots all the way back up above the 70 and leaves a huge wick there. So you had a big old, you've got a big old tail there. That tells me there's contention there again. And so I'll look at those wicks from that perspective of that's an area that there's contention, there's fighting going on. Again, I don't want to be where the fight is. I want to take advantage of the guy who's winning. <laughs> and so I just get out. 
Yeah. So, fellow. That's, that's all you highs and lows. Yeah. So, fellow traders, there's Walmart's take on horizontal lines. And always remember, never forget, it's not what you trade, it's how you trade it. So, go out there and drain the banks. This is the Rumpel one over.